Hey, God bless you, family. It's my birthday today, but I don't celebrate birthdays. <laughs> you know what I think is more uh, cool than a birthday is uh, like a born again birthday. I was baptized in um, February of 2017. In my process of being converted, born again, sanctification is a process. The moment of conversion is at a moment. I don't know exactly when that was because I was learning so much, but um, I kind of put it around that time. So for me, that's kind of more important than when I was, um, you know, when you think about, no offense to anyone who celebrates birthdays, but when you think of just like, we, we're celebrating ourselves the day we were born. It sounds so um, prideful and stuff. And, and I know it's, most of us don't think of it like that. Like we're thinking we're something special. It's just cultural. We've been learning about how, you know, we're kind of wired to think birthdays are so special since we were kids. But anyway, yeah, it's my birthday, and um, rather than celebrating like the day I was born, it's just, for me, being born again, it's just, every day is so great. It's so fun to be saved, to know your destination, to be sure of it, and to just uh, grow in your faith, grow in understanding who God is, how he is in you, what that means, what that looks like. So praise the Lord. I uh, just wanted to... Um, yeah, sure, it's my birthday, because here it is. And who cares? <laughs> In terms of, I don't really care. Um, I wanted to talk about the difference between the catching away, the rapture, and the second coming of Christ. Uh, some people, you know, they, they, they don't even distinguish it. They haven't really thought about it. Um, and I can understand that. You know, I never knew anything about that stuff either until the Lord converted me, rewired me a certain way into Bible prophecy, and now... By default, I must know that stuff because that's part of uh, prophecy, things to come. But before I point out just a few of those scriptures, I was thinking about how the U.S. is putting aircraft carriers and military assets close to Israel. U.K. is doing that too. And, you know, there's such strong language and support for Israel, and especially from, like, the U.S., which is amazing because our administration does almost everything to the ill effect of our country, you know? So it seems, something seems off of me. I'm like, okay, they're, they're, they're supporting Israel, and that's great on paper, but I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I don't trust this administration. And here's what I think is going to actually happen. I think what, what America's going to do is put all these military assets close to Israel. <clears throat> and then... I hate to speak it, but it's just my opinion and thought, like, I believe they're going to get attacked and probably blown up. It's going to be terrible. They're going to blow that stuff up, those aircraft carriers, and then we don't have these defensive um, assets to protect our homeland. We're vulnerable. Just think, we got these major aircraft carriers that are not at bay anymore in the U.S. They're gone. And if they get destroyed, and with all this infiltration we've allowed in the, the porous southern borders of the U.S., um... Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So, it makes me think of, like, when things fall, when the dominoes go, just like Jesus says in Revelation, Behold, I come quickly. Tacos, like a tachometer. You hit the gas, you go, vroom, you, uh, you know, your RPMs cruise in an instant. It's quick. That's what he's talking about, not like quickly 2,000 years ago, and it's like 2,000 years is not quick. Although, a day is 1,000 years, 1,000 years is a day, so two days is not too long either. But, it's going to pop off and happen quickly like that. And then in conjunction with the book of Revelation, talking about the seal judgments being broken. And uh, number one, boom, the um, Antichrist figure on a white horse is revealed. And then we don't know the timing of the seals, but this is what makes me think it could be like dominoes. Because number two is the red horse. And a great sword was given for men to kill them, kill each other. Um, and then there's the one of black horse, like famine. And then the pale green horse, death and decay. <laughs> Man, these could happen really quickly. So what could happen is um, America and our military, our military could be obliterated. And then they give the word to the infiltration of these people who hate America, who are now in our country, shipped all over in our country. They could be in our own town, probably are. Uh, and, and then so, you know, the church goes away. And then let's say Second Thessalonians 2, what's the lie? It could be alien deception saying that's what happened. No, it's not Jesus. It's aliens. They're real. 
that could happen. And then, um, you know, and then the military assets destroyed. And then the, the, the red horse, the great sword to take men to kill each other, that could happen in America. And since it's not evident that America is in Bible prophecy, you know, our fall is begun, but could it be completed by the church removal, the assets destroyed, the code, the, you know, the directive to give to the infiltration for people to start killing and attacking citizens in this country, you know, and, um, and then it just things exponentially go from there. Uh, the black horse, the, the, the inflation, the high prices, we've already got that, that could just continue because of problems and Christians gone to glory, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I'm saying this and this is all terrible and like encroaching and freaky. But remember, if you're a believer on Jesus, Christ comes first, of course. Um, we are not appointed to wrath. And that's wrath because Jesus is, the Lamb is breaking the seals. And the 24 elders are up in the throne room of God before these things happen. I believe those 24 elders are indicative of um, believers. <clears throat> so... That's the good news amongst this this uh, setup that we're all seeing. But that's kind of my sense on this. It's like, it seems too good to be true that the U.S. is supporting Israel. And it's like looking like, oh, great, here we come to save the day. Man, what if we're destroyed? Then we're vulnerable. And then our fall could be complete and swift. And we know that a lot of these people in positions of high power, they've wanted the U.S. to, you know, get low so that a, a more one world type of government can go forth just like uh, Tower of Babel <clears throat> they want to go back to the one the one we are one ever since Chinese virus a few years ago they're all saying we're in this together united one we are one they're priming people and they do this over some time so that it really gets kind of with the passage of time things get intertwined and it gets harder to dis to discern what is real what do I really think about this versus what is told unto me to try to brainwash me to think a certain way Matthew 24, Jesus said, don't be deceived. So, uh, just something to consider. Keep it on your radar as a potential. and Keep your head up looking for King Jesus. All right, guys, so the difference between the rapture and the glorious return, the second coming. So, regarding the catching away the rapture, Christ comes for his own. This is outlaid in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Christ comes. <clears throat> Versus the second coming in Revelation 19, 4, Christ returns with his own, the host of heaven behind him, the armies of heaven. That's us. We're going to see the back of Christ's head as we return with him. We're not going to see the front of his face. If we do, we missed the catching away. We weren't converted, and now uh, the wrath of the Lamb comes fully. Number two, uh, at the rapture, believers are taken to the Father's house, John 14, 3. Jesus talks about this. He's going to prepare that place for us, and then he himself will come. The second coming, believers come to earth, Matthew 24, 30. Um, again, kind of uh, spoken of in that Revelation 19, 4, similarly. Uh, number three, the rapture, seen only by believers. This is in 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Uh, but in the second coming, every eye will see him. This is in Revelation 1, verse 7 and Revelation 19 verse 11 everyone sees Christ's return it's not a hidden thing whereas a rapture is quick twinkling of an eye um, and then Matthew 24 30 also talks about that every eye will see him number four in the catching away rapture there's no reference to say this is just about Jesus getting us and going it's like a military operation get him get get in and get out um, for the second coming Satan is bound and that's in Revelation 20 and 1 to 3. So no mention of Satan at the catching away. At the second coming, Satan is bound, a great chain by an angel. The Lord doesn't even mess with him. He tells an angel, go get him with that great chain. Bind him for a thousand years. Millennial kingdom reign. We reign with Christ Jesus for a thousand years. That's that seventh day. If a year is a thousand years, that makes perfect sense, right? On the seventh day, what did God do? He rested. And Christ Jesus is our Sabbath rest, I believe the book of Hebrews tells us. <clears throat> number five uh, the catching away the earth is not judged no um, it's about to go through the period of judgment and wrath seven year tribulation 
but at that point, it's the it's the uh, the escape route again for the believers. Um, and in the second coming, Earth is judged. You can read about that in Revelation twenty four to five. So you guys see you see the distinction. There's a catching away. That's grace and mercy, and that's the Lord protecting us, just like He did. Uh, Noah on the ark, just like he did righteous Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah before the destruction, uh, and so many other um, little winks and hints of this. Even um, Enoch in the book of Genesis, it said Enoch walked with God, and then God took him, and he was no more. If we are believers and we are walking with Christ, and if you have the Holy Spirit, you will walk with Christ. You'll be taken. There's winks all over Scripture, guys. This is so exciting. Uh, last thing I wanted to point out here, number six, um, at the catching away. It is a mystery. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 talks about this being a mystery, the catching away. Uh, the second coming of Christ Jesus with us. It was foretold in the Old Testament. You can read about that in Daniel 12, 1 to 3. And in Zechariah 12, verse 10. And Zechariah 14, 4. So, as we can see from scriptural evidence, there's a distinction between the catching away and the second coming. I hope this blessed you guys. I know a lot of you who study um, Bible prophecy, you understand this thing. And for some of you who this might not be your forte or something the Lord has wired into you, or if you're new to Christ, you have no idea, or if you don't know Christ yet and you're, you've come across this video, <clears throat> these are some cool things. So get saved today. Read scripture. Be saved so that Christ can catch you away like I've just described at the rapture. And such you will just miss the seven years of tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel. And um, you can return with Christ at the second coming in your glorified flesh to rule and reign. Uh, read the book of John to Revelation 22. Do that again if you haven't read scripture yet. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans uh, 10, 17. And you'll draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. You'll be given the ability to believe and gift of grace through faith to believe in God's word and believe who Jesus is and be transformed and saved and be out of here. There's only one way out of here. It's Christ Jesus. Many of you have heard this before, but I implore you and encourage you to read some scripture. Find out for yourself. Be saved today. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Please hit the thumbs up on my video. Uh, subscribe to my channel and share this video. I would appreciate it. Thank you. I'll see you next time. God bless you.